I said, all you vinyl varmints, all you record collecting crew, have I got a box of records for you. Standing on a corner, suitcase in my hand. Hi everybody. We're here at Studio F with Shadow Man. How are you doing today, man? Uh, you know my situation. <laughs> Stepping sore. Yeah. The golden years. The golden years. Yeah, they're just golden. Yeah. Yeah, it's more like patina, it's not gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Attic Daddy, and uh, this is number, geez, we should, 17? I think so. Yeah. I think so. I uh, believe so. You don't, you don't have to check. I mean, it's, not, it's, <laughs> it's not way gonna, over there. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to make that big of a difference. It's 1717 or something. But uh, today is about Velvet Underground and Lou Reed. We're going to feature. We uh, visited the New York Dolls last week. And we thought while we were in New York, you know, it would probably be cheaper for us just to stay here and do the Lou thing too. New York this time of year is beautiful. It is. It smells like urine, they say. Is that true? You were well, there. I think it permeates the whole year. You've got to give them credit. Mm -hmm. But uh, lovely place. I love New York. Uh, maybe lovely is not the right word. Anyway, as usual, we're staying, a staying away from uh, <laughs> Whatever works for you know, you. the stuff that everybody's seen. It's in the record community. Like, I don't have Transformer with Walk on the Wild Side. And, some of the more popular Lou things, but uh, hopefully you'll enjoy these. Now this is a double album put out by MGM, Verve, a few years after they uh, realized uh, that they had this group, because at the time certainly didn't sell too many records and didn't do too much for anybody except for the uh, Warhol connection. But anyway, it's beautiful, a double one. And by the way, that's not an Andy Warhol, they're emulating that too. And, uh, yeah, with the big, ooh, ooh, pour ooh, it down the ooh, edge. drink, 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 drink. Big bottle on top. Yeah. <laughs> and that's got a very nice, very nice overview of things. And uh, I believe this is, this is British, yes. And that was one of the first places I was able to access. I had a friend that had uh, white light, white heat, white heat, white light. Yeah, the second one with the purple skull on it and everything. So I was familiar with the stuff on that. But certainly didn't hear too much of this on the radio or more apt to read about it and pursue. This is uh, Max's Kansas City. Now, uh, this is the last Velvet Underground proper stuff that they played this summer. They're pretty regular. And Maureen wasn't in the band at the time. She was having a baby and Billy Yule, Doug Yule's younger brother, played drums on this. And it's got a great selection of stuff. And some of the stuff that Maureen sang on, like After Hours and all that, Lou sings on here. And there's a whole, whole different take. Kind of a surprisingly good-natured uh, overview of the whole Max's Kansas City when they were in there for the summer. This, another one, I'm going to have to do the, I'll try to get this right this time. Uh, okay, yeah. Cool. This is another one. The set of legs here and the, you know, nice gatefold of the band inside. And this, Velvet Underground Live, from what I understand, was a party in Texas, like a private party, and somebody liked them at the time, and uh, sprung to have them play in there. It's, again, a very thrashy, really cool volume on the guitars and everything. I think it was a smaller place. That's not a bootleg, is it? No, that's not a bootleg. This is on Mercury. I don't know if they bought the tapes for this or Can what. Can I see the cover again? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Lou Reed Live. And like Lou Reed's talking about the local football team and stuff. and It's pretty weird. But it's got, we're going to have a real good time together on that. that yeah. Patty Smith always yeah. did. This. Now. 
Okay, this was put out, I, I would call this a bootleg, this was put out by the fan club of what goes on. And uh, yeah, this has a lot of the missing stuff. They did a lot of recording between uh, the third and fourth album, between Loaded and the one that's just called Velvet Underground. And um, never used it. Some of the stuff ended up on later Lou solo albums. But uh, it's quite well known now because it's on all the box sets and everything. I can't stand it anymore and Foggy Notion and all those songs. But at the time, this is where you had to go. There's a series of two of these. Now this one has some live stuff from a TV show. It has a flexi disc called Loop that came in a Warhol magazine, I believe. And, uh, and there's, yeah, it's just a great big feedback thing from when John Cale was still with them. But uh, again, very, very cool. And these were put out. And then, since people were actually buying these and there was some kind of interest in them, the record company in their infinite wisdom decided that, hey, we own this stuff. Why don't we put this stuff out? So a lot of the stuff from the so-called Lost album is on here. It's a good place to get it. Really great recordings. Again, you know, Foggy Notion. This is excellent stuff. Since it was unavailable for so long, and now most people, like I've got a five CD box set, and all the things I've been buying over the years, it's been quite available and quite familiar, but it wasn't released at the time. Now this is a bootleg box set. I think I bought this probably in the early 80s. Three records. here all and the first album has the pre velvet underground when Lou Reed was a, a staff writer and musician at Pickwick Records just banging out uh, whatever was the trend at the time we've talked about this before in our episode called hidden charms oh, yeah. and I think I showed these albums before now this here has the Beach Nuts doing Cycle Annie, which is blue. You'd recognize it if you heard it. And, oh, and this one here has the Roughnecks, yeah, which it says from England. And of course they're not. Hmm. That's just another thing. But uh, I have showed these before in the Hidden Charms. But anyway, this box set here just, just about wraps up everything other than the official releases over three CDs. It's quite, quite a thing. And that's a bootleg. Yeah, yeah. Very well done for <sighs> I would say. Jeez. Okay, that's the Velvet Underground. We're going to get into the loose solo stuff now. I'm sure a lot of you have probably seen this. This is his first album. I'm just bringing it because it's a unlikely, uh, you know, it wasn't a huge success or anything like that for sure. And it's interesting because it's recorded in England. It's got like Rick Wakeman on it, and people of, of that ilk, it's kind of strange. It doesn't really have that, well, it doesn't sound like about Underground, but it uh, has some Lou songs on it, Wild Child and all that, got to be uh, part of the whole canon, right? Lou, always writing about rock scene. I mean, always writing about Lou in rock scene. Okay. <sighs> Tires me up just thinking about it. This is metal machine music. Four sides of grinding feedback noise, which has all sorts of opinions about it. Um, it's 1601 on each side, and you put it on, and it just—it's just completely relentless. And of course, he put this out after Walk on the Wild Side when he had a hit, so people were buying it. <laughs> Oh, it's got really snotty liner notes, too, as he say, my week beats your year. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is quite infamous. He wanted to put it out on the classical 
label. Like, yeah, I think it was called Red Star or something like that. And he wouldn't do it. And over the years, I mean, so much has been written about it. Yeah. Some of the reviews when it came out were hilarious. One in Dream Magazine just went, no, 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 <laughs> for the whole column. I just listened uh, recently to uh, my Lou Reed album, Walk on the Wild Side, all because yeah. of the commercial that's been on TV up here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they use Walk on the Wild Side, only it, uh, it's a different language there. Yeah. <laughs> ringa, ringa. Awesome. Sorry. Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Lou Reed, Street Hassle. Not a very popular album. Everybody's seen this, right? But the reason I brought this to talk about, we went to see Lou Reed. And it was Lou Reed and Ian Dury at Massey Hall in Toronto. I remember the same week Elvis Costello, Mink DeVille, and Rock Pile played. I don't know where I got the bread to spring for two concerts, but we went up to both of them. We always had money to spend. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like you had more working. money then. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this was... This was, uh, yeah, probably the last, uh, no, I would say, I remember maybe New York that uh, really, really intrigued me. And I'm not saying much about his later career, uh, but we want to keep this show see, neat, sweet, and petite. And <laughs> yeah. Positive, right? But this was the first time I d ever seen any, that I'd ever saw a person wear his own t-shirt that they were selling there. <laughs> Yeah. And Ian Dury, with, with Ian Dury was so much fun, like, uh, he was out there doing the old English music hall thing in Massey Hall, and everybody was having such a good time, sex and drugs and rock and roll. Ian Dury and, the and, Oh, yeah, yeah, and then he goes off, and there's this, like, sense of dread <laughs> coming out, and oh, God. he is in a mood. Remember, he made everybody wait for an encore until they started booing, and he came out quite satisfied. On the way out, on Massey Hall, I went to look at the equipment. Sometimes I get closer to look at those guitars and everything. And this was on the stage. Look at that. The itinerary. Wow. It's on there. So, I biffed that. And I've had that hermetically sealed for a while. <laughs> yeah. And something else from this concert, you might notice in the background. Oh, no, my... Now Mike thinks we need a mascot because wow. he's trying to, you know, make because our uh, other heroes have on uh, the vinyl community have mascots, and this is uh, yeah. Barry's new friend. And what what are you calling? I, I think we're <laughs> a lot of imagination here. I think we're going to call him Teddy. Teddy. As in uh, Teddy, Teddy Bear. Teddy, get off that woman. Yeah. Yes. Teddy. Teddy is wearing the T-shirt from that concert. The street hassle t-shirt. And there she be. Right. So that's an oldie. I said, hey, babe. Yes, that's right. No moths. So, How did the moths not get to that? Oh, that they've, been, they've been encased in mar marble. Yes. Hermetically sealed. sealed. That's right. On Funk and Langle's doorstep. Yes. Anyway. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed today's show. A bit of Velvet Lou oddities. Yeah, that was very and nice. And we're going to uh, join you again here. Nice to see uh, Rick Strange back with a new video after an absence. Uh, stay off that foot, Rick. That's all <laughs> yeah. I can say. And don't be climbing ladders. When you get old, uh, your bones break real easy. It's not good. Oh, we're going to be doing a gutter guard commercial here any second. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not <laughs> you had a, caught you this morning too. Good to see you guys. I'm done. Okay. Yep. Hot cook your key. Yeah, what the fun. Okay. Big fun. <laughs>